Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 12, maybe this way, this way, backwards for me, it's right for you, I think, <laughs> the AI series, where we're going to implement making our agents choose the closest target to them based on the distance they would travel to get to that target. Normally, when you're checking distance, you just do vector three distance, and you get the answer. But nav meshing is a little bit more complicated because they need to take into consideration the obstacles in their way. So that's what we're going to implement here is checking the distance the agent would actually travel to get to that target. This was a question in another video that I had in the comments and I tried to explain it to them in the comment section and it looks like something got lost in text. So I thought making this video would be an important addition to the AI series because I'm sure some of you also have the same question. So let's jump into this one and check it out. In this scene, I have a 12 by 12 Pro Builder cube as my floor. I also have five cubes that are either three by one by one or the middle ones four by one by one. And they have a nav mesh modifier to make them not walkable for all agents. That way we don't get anything where an agent maybe thinks it can get on top of them. All of these are parented under a world geometry game object and that has our nav mesh surface attached to it that bakes the nav mesh. I also have an agent that has just a capsule as a child object of that and the agent has the nav mesh agent attached. We're only going to make one script in this video. It's move to closest target. And the last thing in the scene we're going to do before we jump into the code is make a sphere and we'll color it green. That's going to be our, our targets just so we can see where we're going to go a little bit easier and have some kind of way to drag them around. I'll make a green material so they stick out a little bit more and then I'll duplicate this one three times and just move around the different ones so they're in different locations. We'll open up the move to closest target script. In here, we'll add a public transform array of targets and a public nav mesh agent agent. Then we'll make a public void choose target. And in there, we'll define some local variables. The transform closest target, we'll set that to null by default. A float closest target distance, and I'm gonna set that to float.max value. We're choosing float.max value because we need a very large number to compare our first path against. So that way the first one is the closest and then we compare each subsequent target to that first one. Then I'll make nav mesh path path equals new nav mesh path. A nav mesh path is a path that's calculated by the navigation system and it's represented as a list of waypoints stored as a corners array. And at the bottom here, you see that it's returned by nav mesh .calculate path. And the point of that is we need to know all of the waypoints that the agent will need to travel to to achieve getting to that target location. Once we know the path that we will take, we'll sum the distance between each point since the NetMesh agent travels linearly between each point. And then we sum up all those distances and we know the true distance that NetMesh agent will travel to reach that point. We need to do that instead of just a vector three dot distance because they might have the obstacles in the way that they need to avoid to get to that target. Now that we have all of those variables, we'll do a for loop or int i equals zero, i less than the target's length, and we'll increment i by one. The first thing we'll do is check if the target at index i is null, and if it is, we'll just continue. That's because maybe in the inspector you don't assign it, maybe that game object gets destroyed. You don't want this code to just explode if for some reason one of the targets is null. The next thing we do is check if navmesh.calculate path. The first parameter we'll put is the current transform.position. The second argument is the destination, so that's the targets index by i dot position. We'll use the agent dot area mask for the path mask and the fourth parameter is the path that we want to store the result into. So what this does is calculates a path between the two points and stores the resulting path into that fourth argument, the path. If that returns true, that means it has a valid path to the target. What we'll do then is put float distance equals vector three dot distance transform dot position to the path dot corners index zero. So we're going to take our current position and check the distance between that 
and the first corner, and then we'll loop over all the remaining corners, which is for int j equals one, j less than path dot corners dot length, j plus plus. And in there we do distance plus equals vector three dot distance again, path dot corners j minus one. And the second argument is the path dot corners j. So since we're starting at one, the minus one is guaranteed to be within range. And if there's only one corner, then this loop just doesn't execute. And then we'll go through each corner, summing the distance. We'll check if the distance is less than the closest target distance, which for the first index it is guaranteed to be. And in that case, we set the closest target distance to be the distance we just calculated and the closest target to equal this target. We'll go through each target and then at the end we'll check if the closest target is not null. I use agent.set destination closest target dot position. That's actually the less optimal way. What I would recommend doing here is putting agent dot set path instead because agent dot destination set destination actually calculates a path again and we just calculated the path. So it's kind of just extra overhead that's not necessary. The last thing we'll do in this class is add a private void on GUI. This is just so I can have a button to set the destination basically to call that function we just wrote. So in here I'll do if GUI button new rec 2020 350 50, that puts it at the top left, a big button that says move to target. And if that returns true, meaning that we've clicked it, we'll call that choose target function. We'll go ahead and make that change to the agent set destination. So we're using set path instead, the more optimal way to do this. What we'll do is make a new nav mesh path called shortest path, set that to null by default. Also set the nav mesh path path to be null and remove the closest target because we don't need that anymore. Inside the for loop, we'll do path equals new nav mesh path. And then if the distance is less than the closest target distance, we'll set the shortest path to be the path. At the end, instead of checking if the closest target is not null, we'll check if the shortest path is not null. And in that case, we'll set the agent path to be the shortest path. Hopping back to the Unity editor, I'll attach the move to closest target script to the agent. That's the same object that has a nav mesh agent on it. I'll drag the agent reference down to the agent field of the move to closest target. I'll click this lock icon at the top right. That makes it so whenever I change a selection in the hierarchy, it does not change the inspector. That way I can select all four targets and drag them to the targets reference field of the move to closest target. In the scene view, you can see this editor script that I put together to help you visualize the different paths that the agent will take. It is drawing a path based on the corners that are on that path that we calculated and highlighting the one that it will take in green, the shortest one. And what you can see here is the vector three distance to the bottom right point is 5.154. The vector three distance to the one that has the green path is six. So even though the one below the nav mesh agent is closer as the crow flies, the pathing that they have to take makes it take about seven units distance and the one on the left of him is 6.6 .6 distance, meaning that one's closer. So that's why we really need to do that calculation of the vector three distances of each of the corners instead of just taking a vector three distance and then setting the path based on what we calculate from there. I'll click play so we can actually see the agent travel on this path. Let me just readjust this scene window so we can see that and the game at the same time. If I click move to target, you see the agent goes to that target. If I move the agent into a wall, we see that we get an invalid path. By the way, if you're interested in how to make an editor control like this, like we're seeing here where we can show values like this in the scene view, let me know in the comments. That'll be a video that I could go into. It was kind of out of the scope of the AI focused AI series that I'm doing right now. So that's why I kind of skipped over it. But let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in learning more about. And I'll definitely do a video on that. If we take this one, we see that again, as the crow flies, the one on the right is closer, but because it has some kind of obstacle avoidance that needs to happen, the path the agent will actually take is longer. So the one on the left is the one he's gonna path. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video and you understand how to make your nav mesh agent choose the closest target to them on the path they would actually travel, not just the vector three distance. If you've been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. 
If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.